I'm going to be uh, introducing uh, the next section here, which is what we call the lightning talk. So we have three innovative companies. Uh, we have Kronos Tech, Solid Stands, and Think Silicon. So uh, each of these organizations will come up, give us a really quick three-minute talk. So without further ado, let me introduce Stefano Giacconi. He's the co-founder and CTO of Kronos Tech. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? All right. So my name is Stefano Giacconi. I'm the CTO at Kronos Tech, and we have developed a disruptive FCC fabric, uh, which brings a lot of benefits to the ecosystem. But today I have only three minutes, and I don't think I have enough time to explain it to you, so I'm going to talk about something completely different. I'm going to talk about traffic. And in particular, I'm going to talk about traffic uh, in the region where I live, which is Southern California. Um, so LA traffic is really the worst in California, as you probably already know, and one of the worst in the US. It's brutal and can trigger anxiety and rage. So let, let's go back and take a look at history of how it's been addressed traffic. So on December 9, 1868, this was the very first non-electric gas-lit traffic light that was installed outside the House of Parliament in London. They were pretty much the same one as the one used for railroads. And uh, this represents the first time that uh, it was a, a regulated uh, traffic flow embedded in, in, uh, in the streets. Now, for more than 145 years later, NLA became the very first city to synchronize all these traffic lights. And this is incredible. It represents the attempt, the very first attempt at the global clocking system, if you think, right? It's equivalent to that. But as you know, there are issues <laughs> with synchronization, right? So it can be a single car that is low, or let's say there is variation across drivers. And if that happens, it can defeat the synchronization miracle. On top of that, if we have an equal traffic flow, uh, we can have a driver to wait for the full traffic life cycle before crossing, even if there is no traffic in his path. And this basically slows down traffic on the routes that are not busy. Here it comes roundabouts, right? And uh, roundabouts uh, have been uh, quite effective in Europe and Asia. Uh, in a roundabout vehicle approaching, the roundabouts must yield to the one that are already in it. And this is really the first attempt of removing her synchronization and uh, facilitate a sort of constraint, a uh, sort of handshake protocol between cars, right? So, can we do better? Of course we can do better. And uh, I think autonomous driving achieves that, right? Being full asynchronous and shake protocol to the next level. So why do you think I talk about traffic today? Well, SOC data congestion represents the traffic issues that we have in modern SOCs. And Kronos can solve the problem. We can reduce TTM, area routing, as well as latency. And we are compatible with standard SOC protocol, and of course, with Tilink. All with security embedded within. So why don't you stop and see us at our boot, and we tell you how we can make our SOC interconnect traffic-free. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Okay, so let's keep going. I'm uh, going to introduce Marianne Damstra. She is the CCO of Solid Sands. So, Marianne. So, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Marianne Damstra, the co founder and the chief commercial officer of Solid Sands. And Solid Sands um, um, makes sure that the quality of a C compiler stays uh, up to paste. Um, uh, we often get the question from customers, why only C? Are there, there are so many other languages? Um, but uh, to answer that question, I have to go back to um, the 70s, where C 
was uh, the most favorable language of uh, many developers. And um, in about 40 years um, until now, they, um, um, C has been used in so many programs. Um, and in 1984, we, um, uh, there was the first uh, compiler C test developed, which is the basis of the, our current compiler test and validation uh, suite super test. And in 2014, we, um, um, <laughs> we came up with SolidSense to continue this um, super test product and stay on the forefront of uh, compiler test, test and validation. Um, as of today, um, we all know um, but do not always acknowledge that compilers are fundamentally um, unstable. Um, every time we, hear, we uh, support our customers with validating their compilers for functional safety standards, we experience that um, you cannot just trust the compiler. Testing is uh, very important. And um, for um, functional safety like ISO 26262 or other um, ISO standards, compiler validation is uh, more necessary than ever. Um, we are today and tomorrow in the uh, exhibition hall with um, one of my engineers who will uh, give a demo um, how SuperTest can support you and uh, make sure that you um, program your application with a reliable compiler. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you. Okay, and now our last speaker is uh, Yuli Mueller. So he's the Senior VP of Sales and Marketing for Think Silicon. Thank you. Thank you. Now I know why I invited, uh, invented lightning talks, because my CTO sent me up here, so at three minutes, it's way too short for a CTO. This is why the marketing guys are here. My name is Suli Müller. I am from Think Silicon, and we are an IP company. We are developing ultra-low power GPUs for embedded systems. And I think what we're seeing here, we, most of us are faced every day with, you know, is the power performance paradox, you know? So rather we have performance demands, they're constantly increasing, or we have power budgets that are constantly declining, so we're always in this trap, you know? And we from Think Silicon, um, we have certainly an expertise here, and we thought, we're gonna bring this to the Risk Five world, you know? Let me introduce you here to New York's Five. So this is the, basically the world first, I think, GPU based on a Risk Five ISA. And this is a very exciting for us, obviously, to be here. So why a Risk Five GPU? Well, first of all, we know graphics, we know rendering, we can doing. We, low, we know low power, we know low gate counts, we know all those tricks here, you know, we proved it already in our previous designs. But not just that, it's a scalable design, you know. Targeting different power and performance levels. The ecosystem, we heard a lot this morning about it, it's there and it's important to support it, yeah. And it's extensible and you can address multiple markets. So let's take a quick look here on the architecture of the Neox 5. And you see here it's uh, a very scalable design, you know, 1 till 16 clusters, 4 till 64 cores, you know. It's configurable, multiple cache sizes, you know, and very important in GPUs, multi-threading. That's a very interesting, and this is very important here. So, What's in for you? What's in here for you in the RISC-V community? So there's a couple of things. So the ISA allows extensions to customize, you know, the New York's V, the New York's V processor array with your own instructions. This is very important because I think it's the first time a GPU allowing this. Then, secondly, if, and I suppose you do, because you're here, using a RISC-V based CPU, you can dynamically offload the main CPU of some of, the, uh, of some of the workload and bring it over to the GPU. 
And last but not least, you know, if you have some legacy parallel code, you can use good old POSIX, the p-threads, you know, to accelerating it. But most important, we need you. We need, uh, we need to have a standardization, no fragmentation. And we heard this this morning a couple of times, you know, when we're writing you that we are working together here, bringing the extension into Rix5 for graphics. Last but not least, that makes us very, very flexible, you know, to bring a RISC V GPU into multiple markets and multiple applications, no matter you know, if it's an SOC just powered with an MCU, with a cross, uh, with a cross uh, over pro, uh, processor, or with an, um, any kind of MPU. That's the end of my three minutes. Please come to our booth for 23 in the exhibition. Our CTO is there. He will give you more than three minutes. And you see a technology preview on the FPGA of New York's five. Thanks very much.